Welcome back to the Business Behind Your Business podcast. I'm your host, Paul Sweeney. As we wrap up 2024, it's great to have you with us. If you're finding us for the first time, well, don't don't fret. There are plenty of past episodes to to listen to. So take the time and, and check out the, the, the back catalogue of episodes, which you can find any, wherever you're listening to this podcast and also on our website at www.thebusinessbehindyourbusiness.com. So thank you for joining us. As we wrap up 2024, I just wanted to share three key things that I've reflected on from the the guests that we've had on the podcast in this past year and also some of my experience with talking to clients and business owners um, during the, the last part of the year particularly. So three highlights, I guess, for me for from the, the podcast, and we've had some great guests with lots of highlights, but one of the things that's really struck me and has come out through um, – I think through well, probably the, the catalyst for me was the conversation I had with Jason Owen from D2N Technology. And right through the whole conversation about why Jason is so successful is this whole idea of the key um, of relationships, relationships in business and how relationships actually help you in business, not just as a, as a, as a business owner, but as a person running your business and who you look for, for mentoring and, and guidance. And uh, during the past couple of years, and look, we're still in this COVID hangover. Back in twenty in twenty twenty four, we're still in the hangover from COVID, and things have changed. And we've had this conversation recently with with a number of clients, and and they were sort of, I guess, you know, saddened that a lot of the culture, a lot of the connection with uh, clients, and you know, in this and one particular situation was where they run a run a school, and. Um, lack of or reduced engagement with the parents of their students because of COVID. So it all went online and then now it's back though. That engagement with the parents, the engagement with their students, it's, it's more become a transactional um, transactional occurrence. Where has it come in? Have, have the lesson pay for it and, and away we go. There's no engagement, no building of culture there. So what we're hearing from a lot of business owners is there needs to be this reconnection, but not so much a reconnection, but a re a rebirth or a reimagining of how we do relationships in business and what do we need to do. And and look, we've we've all jumped on the bandwagon with technology and um, you know embracing Zoom and Teams and video, but we're really. I think we're we're really lacking that face to face connection, that intimate uh, or not, not, not intimate relationship, where we're actually having a real conversation with people. We're actually seeing the real, um, you know, really what's going on with their business, with their needs. We can connect to them on a personal level, and that is is lacking. So what we're seeing is that the inability to increase sales because there's no connection. It's become very transactional, but more about what do I need at the minimum, and I'm not after anything else and look we all want to do business with people we like and trust but if we're not having that connection there then you know the trust is not there it does become very much transactional and and we tend to lean more into that online transaction where we're getting an immediate need but we don't have to make a connection um so my big takeaway from the conversation from Jason, and please go back and listen to it, even if you've listened to that conversation before, please go back and re-listen to it because I, I thought it was absolutely fantastic the way that Jason captured that about the need or how vital relationships are. And remember, Jason sells electronic equipment, communications equipment, digital technology. But one of the key things that he highlights for the success of his business is not just the is the, is the relationships with his suppliers, with his employees, with his contractors, um, and and also with his family and his wider network supporting him in business. Listen to that episode again. But relationships in business are critical, and I think we've we've downplayed the need for those relationships, those connections, that communication, and we've gone too much into the online technology and we've stepped away and we've really lost something in our business transactions. So that's the the big key take takeaway for me. And look, it's something that I'm personally going to be working on really hard in the coming year, particularly. Uh, that's one of my big goals for the new year is to really improve the way that I've embraced our relationships with my clients, with my staff, with um, people who are going to refer me work. And the the business relationships I have. So that that's a big thing for me. So a big takeaway and I really enjoyed that conversation. I encourage you to 
go and have another listen to Jason Owen. So the second thing that came up, and look, I had the opportunity this year of actually seeing some clients achieve some great success. And I've seen some businesses, and Jason is, is one that's been you know, really powering through. Jason, not actually one of my clients, but I really love the way that he's working, and I've connected with Jason through our, our local business chamber. But I've had the chance to be involved with some clients and see that they've grown their business. They've actually achieved some success. And and some of them have actually um, been you know, a bit disappointed by that success. And, and one actually put in his newsletter how he was disappointed with – the outcomes of a new program that he'd implemented or well, implemented a couple of years ago, but the the growth in the program. Now, he was disappointed in the growth because it didn't hit his targets, his forecast, but you know, he did achieve 50% growth in revenue from that product. Now, most of us are saying like 50% growth in revenue from a product is great. Um, but I think one of the things that that – that, that James, who put this in his newsletter, probably missed out on is that that key aspect of when you set goals is, is breaking it down into smaller components and so remembering that each time you achieve a goal, then you move on to the next one, those milestones as you as you get there. And the other thing is, as you're going through the, the year, through your plan, through the often a 90-day cycle, is having an assessment or re, revisit that that goal, that strategy, the actions, and what is working, what is not, and what do we need to adjust? Now, if you do that on a regular basis, you are going to be in a much better position to make those changes, those, those alignments, uh, realignments of where you need to go, or those just you know fixing those small little things that could make it go better. And as you do that progressively throughout the year, you're more likely to, to revisit your goals, your forecasts, and say, well, hang on, that's not realistic or we just need to change X, Y, and Z, and we're going to move forward. So it might be a case of, real. okay, we're getting a lot of inquiries, but we're not converting them into sales revenue. So what's the problem? Where's the, where's the downplay? Is it because the inquiries are coming through, but they're expecting something different from what we're delivering? Or are the inquiries coming through, but we don't have the sales team to respond to them? Or when the sales team respond, they don't know the answers to the questions. So what are the questions they're asking? So these are the sorts of questions you ask when you're revisiting, you're not in as part of your 90 day review of your action plan. You know, what is working, what's not, and how can we improve these things? And look, and James, I'm going to have a conversation with you in the new year and, and, and you know, happy to tap into more about why, why you feel the forecasts are not relevant, but we're going to, we're going to have a, probably a debate about that. But, you know, if you take the, the time and review your progress after, say, 90 days, then it's a lot easier to adjust your strategy and your, your actions and implement. And and then, you know, at the end of the day, when you come to 12 months, you're not disappointed, okay, because you've been working on it and you can see the growth, you can see the improvement. The other thing along that line is making sure that you recognize when you have met your goals, when you have been successful and celebrate that and celebrate it with your team. Because if you don't share with them that they're, that things are successful, that you've actually achieved the outcomes that you want, they're going to keep plodding along going, well, I don't really know if what I'm doing is actually making a difference. You know, do I really need to go and put in that extra effort here or do I really need to pursue this or should I up get, update my skills here because, it, you know, what's the benefit of me learning that new skill? Um, I can't see how I'm going to apply that. But if you actually say to your team, hey, look, our goal was to grow by – five new business clients this month and look we we did that we actually we did six so we've actually exceeded our goal and that's a great thing so you you let them know how you're progressing it and and let them know that they are contributing to the success as well and don't be afraid to have those little celebratory um, moments where you actually celebrate the success celebrate the wins and plan that in and structure it because i think some a lot of time we we get so focused on that big goal that's that big goal but we forget the little steps that we need to take to get there and we forget how successful we actually have been so uh, second big takeaway is make sure you celebrate the successes you have in your business as you progress throughout the year and the third thing i'm going to say is look i've had a number of conversations with people uh, a number of conversations with clients and the conversation um, I could have brought out the tape recorder and replayed the conversation from the previous year and the previous year and the previous year um, you know just talking about what you want to do and how you're going to do it doesn't get the job done you actually have to implement and what we've seen is that the clients the business owners out there you know when you implement on your strategy when you implement on your plan 
you're more likely to actually achieve it because if you don't implement, you're just doing the same thing, you know, and you, and if you're just doing the same thing or well, nothing has changed, so you're not going to move forward, you're not going to actually change, adapt, bring in that new program, bring in that new source of revenue, drive that new marketing and, and get new new customers coming in, improve the skill level of your team. You're not going to do that if you continue to just make the plan but don't implement. Implementation is key. And when we've seen implementation, we've seen results. And, and look, it's great to see businesses taking action. They have a plan. They have a strategy. They've implemented and they monitor the results. They're celebrating the wins and they're celebrating the wins with their team and also their their their, their wider business community, their, their customers, their, their suppliers. And, you know, when you implement and you can monitor, you do achieve and you do grow your business. And that's what we're after here uh, at the Business Behind Your Business. We want you to grow a great, thriving, profitable business that grows from strength, that gives you the ability to you know, fund the lifestyle that you, that you need, that you want, you know, that supplies enough cash profit to make you or to put you in a position where you're debt free, where your, your business is operating effectively, efficiently, smoothly, and, and it's not dependent on you. And, you know, you can create a business that doesn't depend on you and you can create a business that's profitable, strong, growing, and enjoy the rewards from it. We want you to do that. So we're going to continue to have these conversations with you next year. We're going to, we've got a great lineup of guests um, in the pipeline for 2024, and we're really excited about it. We're really excited about you and your business, and we want you to have the great success. So we're going to keep um, the business behind your business going. Uh, we'll be back in January 2024 with a great lineup of guests to have those conversations to help you grow a great business. And thank you for joining us in the journey. So it's been a number of years now, and we're still excited, still you know, pumped to keep uh, working with you and helping you grow that business that you really want. So thanks for joining us. And look, if you've got more time and you need uh, want to refresh, go back and listen to the episodes in the past. They're still as relevant today as they were when we recorded them. Lots of great tips in there in lots of different areas for growing your business. So thank you very much. I'm Paul Sweeney and have a great Christmas New Year period and a sensational 2024.